The story starts with a girl named Lee, who is very frightened. She keeps telling the police that a bus will soon have an accident and everyone on it will die. But before the police can understand or act, the bus number 45 explodes on the road, killing everyone inside. The big question is how Lee knew about the explosion, then suddenly finds herself on bus again before the bus exploded, looking terrified. A passenger named Sam tries to comfort her by offering a tissue paper, which somehow gives Lee an idea. She falsely accuses Sam of inappropriate touching her and demands the bus to be stopped and to call the police. Sam is shocked and denies doing anything, and other passengers mention that the police station is on their route. She then tries to convince other passengers to get off the bus with her to testify against Sam, but no one agrees. Eventually, Lee forces Sam to get off the bus with her. As soon as the bus drives away, Lee apologizes to Sam for lying about the accusation. After the incident, Lee starts to leave the scene, feeling scared. Sam is confused about why Lee accused him falsely and decides to take a cab to his office. Just as Lee is about to call the police again, she hears another explosion from the bus. At the same time, a scooter hits her, and the next thing she knows, she wakes up in a hospital. There, she learns that Sam, who had taken a cab, was also caught in the blast and is now critically injured, facing the possibility of death. Meanwhile, a police officer named Chen is investigating the bus accident. He discovers from security footage that Lee and Sam had left the bus just before it exploded. Chen goes to the hospital to talk to them. When he asks Lee how she knew to get off the bus before the blast, she starts explaining everything from the beginning. Lee shares that that morning she had taken bus number 45 to go to a bookstore and had fallen asleep next to Sam. During her journey, Lee hears a phone ringtone and moments later the bus explodes, killing everyone, including herself. Surprisingly, after the explosion, she finds herself back on the bus, confused about whether she has traveled back in time or if the explosion was just a nightmare. However, the situation repeats itself with the ringtone followed by another explosion, leading her to realize she is trapped in a time loop where the bus explodes every time, killing all the passengers, and then resets, sending her back to the start of her journey. Each time the loop resets, only Lee remembers what happens next, while the other passengers have no memory of the previous events. In subsequent loops, Lee tries various methods to stop the bus and warns everyone to get off to avoid the explosion, but no one listens to her. The cycle continues with the bus exploding at the same time, resulting in everyone's death. Eventually, Lee discovers that the cause of the explosion is a collision with an oil tanker while the bus tries to avoid a scooter on the road. When her warnings are consistently ignored, Lee resorts to falsely accusing Sam of inappropriate behavior in an attempt to divert the bus to the police station. But even this plan fails to convince the passengers. Upon hearing Lee's story, Officer Chen finds it hard to believe. Meanwhile, Sam, who had been receiving medical treatment, dies but then also awakens before the accident on the bus, indicating he is now part of the time loop and has memories of the events. When Sam questions Lee about their situation, she realizes he is also aware of the loop. This revelation brings Lee some comfort, knowing she's not alone in her knowledge. However, Sam, overwhelmed by everything, decides to leave the bus quickly, only for the cycle to repeat with another explosion. Both Lee and Sam then find themselves waking up, moments before the disaster once again. Sam and Lee both take turns trying to convince the bus driver and passengers to stop the bus, but, like Lee's previous attempts, no one believes them. In one of the loops, they decide to sit quietly and discuss their next steps. Lee theorizes that Sam remembers the loop because in one of them, she had forced him off the bus early on. Since the bus explodes near a flyover due to a collision with an oil tanker, they focus on delaying the bus to prevent it from reaching the spot of the accident. This time, they successfully warn the driver about the scooter rider, ensuring his safety and avoiding the collision with the oil tanker. They celebrate, thinking they have broken the loop and saved everyone on the bus. However, as the bus crosses the flyover, Lee hears the ringtone again and the bus explodes, killing everyone. This realization shocks them. The explosion wasn't caused by the accident with the oil tanker. Understanding that the bus must have a bomb, they quickly get off and call the police to report the bomb on the bus, hoping to save everyone. Yet the bus explodes again. Officer Chen suspects that Lee might be involved in planting the bomb due to her prior knowledge of it. As a result, the police start tracking down Sam and Lee's location using the information from the call. There on the bridge, Sam and Lee finds out that every time when time resets, they travel back in time one minute, giving them extra time to stop the blast. Faced with no other option, Sam suggests they explain the time loop to the police, even though Lee has tried and failed to convince them in previous loops. When the police arrive, they take Sam and Lee to separate interrogation rooms at the police station, questioning them on how they knew about the bomb. Sam decides to tell the truth and tries to explain the situation, while Lee, knowing from past experiences that the police won't believe her, chooses to remain silent. Consequently, the police decide to conduct a drug test on both of them. During the interrogation, it's revealed that Sam is a game architect working for a private company, and Lee is a college student. 
Before this incident, they had no prior acquaintance. The police find it suspicious how they both got off the bus together. In the absence of other witnesses or evidence, the police decide to charge Sam and Lee with the bombing. Meanwhile, Lee fell asleep. When she wakes, she discovers that sleeping transports them back to the bus before the blast. They realize that to end the time loop, they must prevent the bomb which is in the bus from exploding. Determined to find the bomber among the passengers, believing the bomb could be hidden in someone's bag, they decide to investigate. In a bold move, Lee starts screaming about a bomb on the bus, triggering a passenger to detonate the bomb prematurely in the next loop, confirming their suspicion suspicion of a bomber among them. They recall a masked man who always sits behind them and never shows his face, suspecting he might be the bomber. As with every loop, they go one minute back in time, they gets off at the bus station the masked man originally boarded and calls the police. While Sam avoids being captured by the surveillance cameras, he is frustrated that Lee acted without confirming their suspicion. Following Lee's call, Officer Chen blocks traffic to intercept bus number 45. They board the bus and find the bomb, but it's too late to prevent the explosion. The bus explodes and also kills some policemen. Witnessing the failed attempt from a distance, Lee suggests to Sam that since he wasn't seen by the cameras, he should go home and await police investigation. And anyway, as soon as they sleep, they have to time travel again. After being taken into custody by the police, Lee finds herself under investigation. Lee consistently tells the truth at the police station but they didn't believe her. So she provides names and details about the officers involved in the case, which surprises the police. They had already realizes that with Lee, Sam had previously exited the bus, prompting them to start looking for Sam. Meanwhile, understanding the need to reset the loop again, Sam decides he must fall asleep. After failing to obtain sleeping pills without a prescription, he resorts to drinking alcohol until he becomes intoxicated. The police find him in this state and take him into custody. By this time, Sam falls asleep, triggering the reset of the loop. They focus on the man with the mask. Pretending to engage in a fight as a distraction, they try to snatch his bag. However, their plan fails, and the bus explodes once again. Learning from their unsuccessful attempt, Sam and Lee decide to adopt a less confrontational approach in the next loop. This time, Sam pretends he wants to take a photo with Lee as a pretext to get closer to the masked man and his bag. They again try to snatch the bag from him, but he gets asthma attack. Despite the asthma attack, the man refuses to let go of his bag, leading to a struggle that ends unsuccessfully when the bus explodes again. In the subsequent loop, they decide to prevent the man from boarding the bus by pulling him down at the station. Upon inspecting his bag, they discover only his cat inside, realizing he was protective of the bag, not because it contained a bomb, but because animals are not allowed on the bus. Understanding his motives, they let him go. Lee and Sam realize that the loop resets only when both of them fall asleep together. If one sleeps before the other, the sleeper remains unconscious until the other falls asleep, as previously when the loop reset only after Sam slept. They decide to visit the blast site to gather more information about the passengers. They interact with the families of the deceased passengers. While they are at the blast site, the man with the mask approaches them again. He asks Lee and Sam if they were the ones who saved him. Grateful, he invites them to his house and introduces himself as Kim. Lee and Sam speculate that Kim, like Sam, will remember the events of the loop. Lee takes the opportunity to explain their situation to Kim, who surprisingly believes them. Kim mentions having read about such time loop phenomena in research papers and agrees that to break the loop, they must prevent the bus explosion. Together, they begin to compile a list of the other passengers to identify potential suspects for the bomber. While working on this task, Kim steps out for work, leaving Sam and Lee to continue gathering information on their own. They come across a report describing an old man with a large bag, which draws their attention. So they, they decide to check his back in next loop. Actually, the old man named Mao was recently released from jail following a car accident and was returning home on the day of the bus explosion. With Kim joining them on the bus, but not remembering the previous loop's events, Lee and Sam realize they must handle the situation themselves. They stage a fight to distract the other passengers, allowing Lee to discreetly check Mao's bag by stepping on it. To their surprise, they discover the bag contains not a bomb, but watermelons Mao was bringing home for his family from jail, proving that Mao was not the threat they suspected. Feeling relieved, but still vigilant, Mao shares the watermelons with everyone on the bus, creating a moment of camaraderie among the passengers. However, the bus explodes again, forcing Lee and Sam into yet another loop without having identified the bomber. In their continued effort to identify the bomber, Lee and Sam notice a man named Jin who had a large suitcase, and there was a lady sitting across from the passenger who was carrying a large plastic bag. Wondering why anyone would carry a bomb in such a conspicuous manner, they first decide to inspect the Jin's suitcase, hoping it might contain the bomb. However, upon creating a pretext to open it, they discover only clothes inside, eliminating another passenger from their list of suspects. 
With the bomb's detonation imminent and running out of time, Sam decides to investigate the lady with the plastic bag. As he approaches and touches her, the lady reacts by pulling the lever of a cylinder, which leads to the explosion of the bus. So the bomber that Sam and Lee have been tirelessly searching for throughout these loops was this old woman. Sam dashes towards the woman named Laura in an attempt to confiscate the bomb. However, Laura draws a knife and launches a vicious attack, fatally wounding both Sam and Lee, and she detonates the bomb. In next loop, Lee decides not to flee but to confront her again on the bus in an effort to disarm the bomb. During this confrontation, as Laura attempts to attack Lee with the knife once more, Sam intervenes, leading to a struggle during which Laura is killed with her own knife. Sam's actions inadvertently save everyone on the bus, but the situation quickly turns grim as the passengers witness what appears to be him murdering Laura. Sam flees from the bus, heartbroken over the thought that he has ruined his life for the sake of preventing the explosion. But there was again twist in the story following Laura's death. Another passenger activates the bomb, causing the bus to explode once again. This suggests that Laura was not acting alone, and that there was at least one other accomplice involved in the bombing plot. Both try to escape from police, but they didn't have another choice, so they both sleep and loop resets again. In their next attempt, they make a plan to evacuate all the passengers quietly without alerting Laura. To achieve this, they type a message on a phone, pretending to be police officers, instructing all passengers to get off at the next stop. Their plan initially seems to work as passengers begin to exit the bus upon reaching the stop. However, Laura becomes suspicious of and chooses to detonate the bomb, leading to another reset of the loop. In next loop, Sam decides to share the warning message exclusively with Mao. Sam informs Mao about the lady with the bomb and seeks his assistance. Similarly, when Kim boards the bus, Sam recruits his help as well. Simultaneously, Lee approaches the bus driver named Wang to inform him about Laura and the bomb she possesses. She shares her new plan, then when they subdue Laura, he have to stop the bus near a river bridge so that they can throw the bomb in the river. As their plan unfolds, Sam and Kim work together to subdue Laura, preventing her from using her knife. Lee manages to snatch the bomb away from her, urging the driver Wang to stop the bus near the river so they can safely dispose of the bomb in the water. However, the situation takes an unexpected turn when Wang refuses to stop the bus near the river, revealing himself as Laura's accomplice. The bus halted in the middle of the road and time running out before the bomb explodes, Sam takes quick action. He breaks the bus window and was about to throw the bomb away. But the bomb explodes once again, killing everyone on the bus. Lee and Sam find themselves again back in time. Lee confronts Wang directly, questioning his involvement with Laura in the bombing. Wang is shocked by Lee's knowledge, but before he can respond, the loop resets due to another explosion. Lee and Sam decide to investigate Wang and Laura's backgrounds to understand their motives. They deduce that the bomb goes off at 1.45 p.m. if they do not intervene, but if they try to prevent it, Laura and Wang ensure the explosion happens before that. To gather more information about Wang, they visit the bus service office where he works. Posing as reporters writing an article about Wang, they convince the manager to show them Wang's file. They learn that Wang moved to the city four years ago after leaving his wife and has since been living in an apartment provided by the bus company. They quickly head to Wang's residence. Sam deceives Wang's roommate by claiming he is Wang's nephew and needs to collect some of Wang's belongings. While Lee engaged the roommate in conversation and pretending to look for Wang's things, Sam searches for any evidence. During their talk, the roommate claims Wang is a decent person. He tells, actually, Laura is Wang's estranged wife, whom he separated from four years ago due to her poor mental condition. Meanwhile, Sam finds an old damaged phone that might have important information or hints. They pick up the phone and go away. Sam and Lee are trying to figure out how to retrieve data from the phone. Since Lee knows a lot about the police from a previous experience, they decide to approach the police for help. They go to the police station and tell Officer Chen that they overheard a conversation about a bomb between a driver named Wang and a passenger named Laura on the bus. Officer Chen, trusting them, asks for more details about the bomb. Lee mentions hearing a ringtone before the bomb went off. They also hand over the broken phone they found at Wang's house to Chen, hoping he can extract data from it and use it in his investigation. Chen discovers from the phone's data that the phone belonged to Wang and Laura's daughter, who died in an accident five years ago. Shockingly, police records show she was killed on the same bridge where the blast occurs in every time loop, and she was also killed at the same time as when blast occurs every time, which is 1.45 p.m. Chen reveals that the police never found out why she suddenly went off in the middle of road and was then hit by a truck leading to her death, and the case was closed after a few months. Now, Sam and Lee understand that Laura and Wang's actions were driven by the death of their daughter. Sam and Lee asks how to stop a bomb from exploding if they inform the police about bomb with very little time. 
Chen suggests that if they don't have much time, then if they can delay the bus even a little, it would give the police a chance to prevent the explosion and save the bus. Both of them devise their next plan and make sure to remember Chen's phone number. As the loop resets, Sam starts to bleed from his nose, showing that the repeated time travel is beginning to affect his health, which means they need to act quickly. Sam then quickly takes a picture of Laura and sends it to Chen's mobile, immediately reporting the bomb on the bus. Lee rushes to the driver Wong and creates a diversion by claiming there's a molester, which stops the bus, giving the police extra time to get to the bridge. Sam and Lee continue to find ways to delay the bus further. As a result, Wong closes the bus door and drives off, but because of their actions, the bus is delayed long enough for police officers to be ready and waiting at the next stop. Wong refuses to stop the bus, so they urgently chase after it. At the same time, Chen has set up a blockade on the bridge to intercept the bus. Meanwhile, Sam, along with Mao and Lee, manage to take control and inform everyone on the bus about the bomb. Lee tries to persuade Wong to stop the bus, but Wong says everyone neglected his daughter, so he will also listen to them. Although the police succeed in stopping the bus, Wong has already locked it from inside. Acting quickly, Sam breaks a window, retrieves the bomb, and hands it to Officer Chen, who attempts to dispose of it in the river. However, the bomb explodes near Chen, causing severe injuries to him while everyone else remains safe. Chen is rushed to the hospital, but his survival seems uncertain according to the doctors. In the hospital, Lee and Sam discuss their next steps, realizing that while they might have ended the loop by saving the others, Officer Chen's life is in jeopardy because of their actions. Meanwhile, Wang and Laura are arrested for their involvement in the bombing, but they refuse to reveal their motives. The story then flashes back five years to a day when Wang, after returning from work, realizes he left his phone in the car. His daughter's continuous calls to that phone go unanswered. Shortly after, he receives devastating news from the police about his daughter's fatal accident. Nobody understands why she suddenly stepped onto the road that day. Time went by, days turned into months, yet the police couldn't figure out the reason behind her actions. Eventually, they closed the case related to her death. Following this, both of her parents began to suffer from mental distress, but one day they got a video in which someone was molesting their daughter, and both of them understood why their daughter ran on the middle of the road that day and was killed. Driven by their despair, they decided to end their own lives. Wang began working for the bus company, and Laura started making bombs. Sam and Lee, concerned that the time loop might not restart, decided to investigate the events leading to their daughter's death. Their first step was to consult her school teacher, and they were joined by a police officer for this purpose. The teacher admitted to not knowing anything specific, but recalled a social media post made in the school group around the time of the incident. Prompted by this, they hurried to the campus to locate and examine the post. Among the various comments, one in particular caught their attention. It claimed that there was a molester on the bus that day. The three of them discovered the IP address belonged to a girl named Lou. Initially, Lou was unwilling to share any information. However, after they applied some pressure, she eventually told them everything. The story then takes us back five years to a day when a man was intentionally harassing Wang's daughter. Lou, witnessing this, recorded a video of the harassment. However, when the man realized he was being filmed, Lou, out of fear, left the scene. She considered reporting the incident to the police, but her mother advised against it, worried the man might target her. Liu was unaware that the girl would end her life because of the harasser. That same evening, she commented in the school's group chat, mentioning her intention to upload the video of the harassment. However, after reading comments that criticized her for not intervening during the incident, questioning why she didn't act to save the girl at the time, Liu came to realize that others might not understand her perspective, so she altered her statement, claiming she had lied about witnessing a molester. It now became clear to everyone that the girl was in panic about the molester. She first tried to call her father, Wang. When he didn't answer, she left from the bus and started running, which tragically led to her being killed in an accident. Lee and Sam obtained the cloud video storage ID and password of the molester's video from Lou. With this information, they prepared for the possibility of entering a new loop, uncertain if it would indeed occur. Then, news arrived that Officer Chen had died, which triggered the loop to reset. However, this time around, Lee was aware that Sam was suffering from the effects of time travel, finding him unconscious. With little time to spare, Lee initiated their plan, starting with informing Officer Chen about the bomb on the bus to ensure the police could intervene and remove it. Lee instructed everyone to manage Laura, and they all began to do so. Even though Laura had reached the bomb and was about to detonate it, Sam intervened in time to stop her. Despite Wong's attempt to escape by accelerating the bus, it ended up crashing into a police car and came to a halt. Wang then attempted to flee with the bomb, but before he could detonate it, Sam showed him the video of his daughter and the molester, convincing him that they now had the evidence needed to seek justice for his daughter. Therefore, Wang and Lara no longer needed to resort to violence. 
By then, Officer Chen had also arrived on the scene, and he assured Wang that the police would pursue the molester and press charges for the murder of his daughter. Convinced by Chen's promise, Wang handed over the bomb to him just seconds before it was set to explode. Chen quickly disposed of the bomb into the river, preventing any harm. This time, everyone was safe. Wang and Lara were then arrested by the police for endangering the other passengers. Despite their arrest, they felt a sense of relief, knowing that there was now a chance for their daughter's death to be avenged and that justice might finally be served. After the investigation concluded, Chen questioned Lee and Sam about how they got his personal number to call and provide all the information. They found themselves unable to answer because they couldn't possibly explain the truth to Chen. However, Chen revealed that he remembered everything from the last loop after he had died, which allowed him to take the actions he did. Finally, Lee and Sam went home, still anxious about whether the loop had truly ended. They went to sleep with nervousness, but when Sam woke up the next morning, he discovered that the loop had indeed ended. A few days later, all the passengers were honored for their collective effort in stopping Laura. The molester, responsible for the death of Wang and Laura's daughter, was also arrested. He was sentenced to the same prison as Wang, providing Wang an opportunity for his revenge. In the end, all the passengers rejoiced with their families. Lee and Sam, now a couple, visited the grave of Wang and Laura's daughter. They placed a rose on her grave as a tribute, marking the end of the entire TV series. Thank you for watching this video. It took me 15 days to create this video for you. So please like and subscribe for more new contents like this. Thank you.